Pokemon, a series near and dear to my heart, and one that has a lot of mechanics despite how simple and understandable it can be. Some game design decisions in these games are fantastic, and truly enhance the experience, like the physical special split or Pokemon Ami. However, some of these decisions really don't make the games any better due to their implementation, like today's topic, Hidden Machines or HMs. HMs, for those unaware, are moves that can be taught to the player's Pokemon to affect the environment so the player can progress. Surf allows you to get across bodies of water, Strength gets large obstacles out of your way, Fly allows you to travel across the region in seconds, etc. Despite their utility, most fans hate these things, mainly due to the inconveniences they bring. In order to use the HMs, you must use one of your Pokemon's four move slots on one of these moves, losing out on useful in-battle utility for a move that is typically bad. Sure, some of these are alright in battle, but moves like Flash, Rock Smash, Cut, Defog, and even Rock Climb just aren't that great the further you progress into the game. This becomes an even bigger problem in the Hoenn and Sinnoh games, as they require a lot of HMs to even beat their games. For them, unless you spread the HMs over your team, you'll need 1-2 to two team slots taken up just for these moves, which cripples your team. Alongside this, HMs cannot be forgotten without the help of the move deleter, which in most games doesn't show up until after the 6th gym. These moves are just inconvenient, and most people were happy to see them leave the series in 2016. However, I feel most people have failed to see the good that came from these moves while they were in the series. I believe that the Pokemon HMs are a great mechanic implemented in the worst way possible. But why do I like them? Well... Number 1. They offer sensible obstacles the player overcomes directly. Some obstacles in Pokemon are pretty stupid. Blackouts that ban people from walking down the street, horny fanboys blocking intersections, fucking self-aware dancers that stand there for no reason, etc. While these situations are funny once or twice, they become tiring and raise questions if used too often. Most of the obstacles that HMs affect make sense when thought about. A 10-year-old child probably can't swim in torpedo-infested waters, scale large rock walls, or cut through prickly thorns. The HMs offer logical solutions to these problems, since Pokemon can do just about everything. Alongside that, these obstacles are overcome by the player directly, not inadvertently. Those stupid obstacles I mentioned earlier just kind of disappear when you get a gym badge or talk to a certain person, which feels kind of arbitrary. It doesn't feel like you solved a problem, rather you just waited for a bit and it got solved without you. While HMs are not necessary for good barriers in these games, they offer the developers simpler and easier options than coming up with new story segments, alongside giving the player a feeling of agency and power, since they're the ones who fix the problem. Number 2. They allow for interesting puzzles and shortcuts in routes. A lot of the routes and caves in the Gen 7 and 8 games have just about nothing going on in them, mainly just being small hallways with some grass and trainers. Just being able to add a little interactivity by breaking rocks and cutting trees to get items or fight more trainers would add a lot of life to roots. Alongside that, for dungeons, HMs allow for lots of puzzles involving navigation. Take this puzzle in Sea Floor Cavern for instance. Without strength, this kind of puzzle couldn't really exist, but it allows for this area to become more secretive and interesting to explore, since there are all of these obstacles in your way. It makes sense that there are a ton of rocks in this underground cave, well, what are they blocking? These situations allow areas to become more secretive and satisfying to explore. Plus, for map design, allowing the player to unlock shortcuts back to older areas through natural barriers like HMs is incredibly useful for the developers when building a large map that needs to be concise and easy to navigate. Number 3. They give your Pokémon a purpose in the overworld. In any game where a team is used, Making sure every member of the team feels useful in multiple situations is important. Think back to any of your older teams. You probably remember the Pokemon used for Fly or Surf a lot more than the other team members, because you used them all the time, even outside of battle. In a battle, both the player and their Pokemon are needed. You use the items, make switches, and give commands, while the Pokemon actually fight. Without HMs, you do everything in the overworld, while your Pokemon do nothing. With HMs, they can soar through the air, climb waterfalls, light up caverns, all of which are things you can't do alone, 
and truly make your Pokemon feel more real and helpful. So how can we fix the HM's problems while keeping all the stuff they do well? Simple. Instead of making them into key items or making all the moves have the same utility as HM's, just make the original HM's more convenient. Step 1. Give every Pokemon four separate HM slots. As stated before, the biggest problem with the HM's is that they take up valuable battle moves in exchange for overworld utility. But what if we separated these two things by giving every Pokemon separate HM slots? It works something like this. Let's take this lovely Whalmer. I want to teach it Dive, but I don't want it to lose any in-battle moves. Well, if I teach it Dive into an HM slot, it can be used in the overworld, but can't be used in battle or be forgotten without the move deleter. But what if I want to teach it Surf for battles? Well, if I teach it into the battle slots, the HM operates just like a TM. The move can be used in battle and be forgotten at any time, but cannot be used in the overworld. Step 2. Make them accessible to more Pokemon. There are a lot of times where players will be choosing team members, and then get so involved because a Pokemon they want to use can't learn a certain HM. I've wanted to use Tentacruel in Gen 2, but it can't get Waterfall. It gets every other Water HM, but not Waterfall. My solution to this is to allow any Pokemon who already learns a certain HM to keep that ability, but to spread the HMs around based on typing. For the following list, all fully evolved Pokemon of that type will receive the respective HM coverage. All Water types should receive all the Water HMs. All Fire, Psychic, Fairy, and Electric types should receive Flash. All Flying types should get Defog and Fly. All Normal, Steel, and Bug types should receive Cut, and all Normal, Rock, Fighting, and Steel types should get Rock Smash, Rock Climb, and Strength. With this system, Pokemon like Gliscor and Tentacruel can get possible battle moves they'd never have otherwise, offer more possibilities when building a team, and make HMs less annoying since more Pokemon can use them. And that's it. So what do you think of my solution? Do you agree with me, or do you want me to burn in hell alongside the HMs? Let me know. I gotta say, I'm just glad I got this video out before they started making Diamond and Pearl remakes, since those games need this advice more than anything. Son of a 